Yeah, so we're here at Shield Decree in County Monaghan. We're about seven kilometres outside of Carrick Macross, quite a rural area for anybody who knows it. We were lucky enough to be able to come here and buy this house. It's a farmhouse with old farm buildings attached and a field of 1.6 acres out the back. We've been trying to develop the farm buildings into an education centre. We've been on the site for about just under two years. And it's interesting, the first year of being here, the grass actually turned yellow. And it was like, it was like drug withdrawals. It was essentially that from what it had been sprayed on before. It has been used as an industrial agricultural site since the like 60s, 70s, probably longer. Many of these agricultural like fields, we call them fields, but they're actually deserts. They're green deserts. So really trying to reintroduce the biodiversity makes the system healthy. So what we're trying to create here is an alternative model, like a model of what is possible. And it is taking inspiration from many other people who are doing this around the world. Regenerative farming, regenerative agriculture, permaculture. We're trying to create a system where we can grow our own food in a way that builds soil, sequesters carbon, builds biodiversity, feeds the wildlife of the area, brings wildlife back to the area and also feeds ourselves and our local community with nutritionally dense, non-toxic food. If humans disappeared from all of this land, Ireland would become, for the most part, a forest. So as long as we're trying to create our food systems in a way that's working against the way nature operates, we're going to be fighting a losing battle. We're fighting with nature as opposed to working with her. Farming often see that we need to cut down trees in order to have room for pasture. But actually, the animals don't benefit from that because often they need protection from the sun or from the rain. And also then it's just like green deserts you can see around us. So with the idea of an agroforestry is you plant trees in straight lines and in alleys. You're still planting a lot of trees, but also the farmer can come in with his tractor, can come in with the animals. We have alpacas here that we move them through it. They can graze the grass, they can eat it. And then we have chickens as well that follows it too. And you could add a lot more too. So what we're trying to do here is create examples of what's possible, alternative ways of producing food while sequestering carbon and meeting many of the issues we face today and restoring the ecosystem. We have three systems in place at the moment. We have a market garden, so obviously for growing organic vegetables and for giving us something to eat. <laughs> so that would be more annual crops, although we have some perennials there as well. And then we have a food forest system, which is mainly perennial crops. And the idea with this is growing on different layers. So there's tree layer, shrub layer, there's seven layers all together. And then finally, we have an agroforestry system over here where we're sitting actually, where we have space where people could graze animals and then also we have the trees fruit and nut mainly yeah so i think during this past year and and a bit more with the COVID pandemic but then other things like snowstorms people have noticed and it's come to their attention i suppose how our supply chains particularly with regards to food are quite distorted and they're maybe not really serving our needs so I suppose one of the best ways to be able to challenge that or to be able to respond to that would be supporting local food producers, knowing where your food comes from, knowing how to grow yourself. That's like a really great thing. We're actually teaching a food growing course at the moment. It's amazing. Many of them have just taken this up over the pandemic and really reconnected with the soil, with the land. We're not interested in supplying food for the European market or for, you know, anywhere else. We're, we're really interested in growing food for our local community. And then the hope is that other people who are doing it around the country will grow food for their local communities too. And that it's just much more resilient. We say to our customers, come, be on the farm, see where your food is coming from. And even better than that, some people who are buying eggs off us have now gone away and got their own chickens and we're like brilliant we lose a customer but you're taking responsibility for your own food and that's great not everybody wants to live on a farm not everybody wants to grow their own food and that's okay we not everyone has to but as consumers too like you've got little aldi tesco all these guys and they're selling their vegetables at below cost price by putting our money into local food systems by supporting local food growers that's also a really powerful way of doing it as well our wider mission is restoring the ecosystems of Ireland and the ecosystems and the communities. So obviously we need to do all of this work on the land and the environment, but also we need to work with people and help people to reconnect with wider nature. You know, Those things in ourselves, like our relationship with nature that needs to be addressed, need to be looked at. There's a quote that always inspired me, is like, you don't beat a system by um, fighting against it, you beat it by creating an alternative system that makes the original one obsolete. One of the groups we've worked with so far and would like to continue is working with schools. And we've done that with AFRI actually, we worked with two schools in Monon here, like 
introducing them to the concepts that we're talking about here, that how they're connected to nature and wider scale ecosystem restoration. And I think what it does for students in particular, for young people, giving them something positive or something that they can really get their hands into, like ecosystem restoration, it's a really, really hopeful message for them. For young people to grow, to learn from being here in this space, we see it as very interconnected, that it's their own personal growth, as well as those other things that they learn about working the land or their understanding of, I suppose, their relationship with nature and all of those things. We're using this word permaculture or regenerative agriculture and it's been practiced for thousands of years by indigenous people. So in a way, it's relearning what our ancestors knew. It's reconnecting with the wisdom of the land too. I'm reading a book at the moment, 32 Words for Field, how Irish people, like we had such a connection to the land and because not every field is the same, but it's just this deep connection with the land. So how can we come back to that a bit and relearning what our ancestors already knew? So actually our name, Shield to Cree, means seeds of the heart. I suppose it's that combination of these areas that we want to work in, which is the heart work, the inner work, the spiritual work, the transformative work, and then it's also the work on the land and putting seeds, growing something new, you know, so, so seeds is actually very symbolic for us. But also, I mean, it, it sort of ties in with the different types of education programs that we do want to offer. As Garrett mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of them are old practices that maybe we're losing and one of them would be seed saving, you know, seed saving is just so crucial. Yeah, it's just a very worrying state of affairs with how seeds have gone in terms of commercial producers of seeds. 60% of the seeds in the world are now owned by four companies. So it's, it's getting smaller and smaller, but this is old wisdom. This is indigenous wisdom. These, these seeds, even these plants existing in themselves are people having put time and effort into selecting and growing plants year in, year out and saving the seed from them. So we are, we're trying to bring back awareness around that, link in with other people in the community as well who practice seed saving and then who also know a lot about yeah propagating trees and bushes and just relearning all of this knowledge that we had before and then showing that abundance of nature that can come from from this it's it's not about what we can what we have to buy in you know we can actually learn these practices mm. and and then just give ourselves a better food security in general we try to buy most of our seeds that we can off seed savers their demand has gone up I think something like is it 200 percent over the pandemic which is great like people are beginning to connect with the importance of it too so the commercial seeds don't suit the needs of a local small-scale grower anyway mm -hmm. so they're better off for many reasons to buy organic open pollinated seeds absolutely there's so many resources out there for people to attend courses to learn or pick up a book or talk to your grandparents <laughs> or talk to the neighbours you know there's a lot of work involved in planning if you want to grow to provide for your own family but I would say don't be worrying about that just do it grow if you have a small little planter box out at the back of your house that you're like oh let's put something in there that's not flowers let's put some lettuce or something in there and then just cut your own lettuce for the summer or do something small like that and you just see how accessible it can be and, and maybe in time you'll transform your whole ornamental garden into food into edibles yeah, I think just going for it. And there's just so many resources online at the moment, so many great videos of people with so much experience. You can learn such a great deal from that. Any question you have, people can answer it for you. Mm. And there's loads of people doing like loads of great courses in around Ireland too. We'd love to more and more begin focus on perennial crops, plants that, that you plant one time and that keep going, so trees and that too. So we have food forest over there, the model is that too. Like lawns just make no sense to me too. They're they're just a gra like they need a bit of, like, you know, if you're playing a bit of football or sports or recreation or kids, yes. But like we have these big lawns that just actually don't make any sense. We have to cut them every week in that too. Whereas, like if we could plant some fruit trees, some nut trees, some asparagus, Jerusalem artichoke, like lots of perennial crops that we won't just benefit, but the also wider nature. And then also it's like that they're there, you plant them once and it takes a bit of energy to get them going. But once they're established, yeah, I think it's getting started and doing it. The country signed up to the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and local councils are also developing climate action plans and so there's an understanding that they have a role to play in climate adaptation and mitigation and I think there are some really great initiatives in there in terms of like recognition of needing to support planting of native trees and more biodiverse areas in their towns and villages and rural areas as well. I think that they need to go a bit further. <laughs> I do think that they need to really look at things around, you know, hedgerow cutting, the spraying of glyphosate, the spraying of herbicides and pesticides 
without any permissions needed or anything like that. I think a council could take a very strong stand on those things and people would come with them on it, you know, and I think the council could also take more initiative in explaining to people why they're doing things as well, you know, so if they are making changes to their policies and things like that, you know, even just putting it out there on local radio or in the local press and letting people know that these are the reasons why we're promoting these types of things and using it as an education opportunity as well because we all need to understand this and change. And yeah, boycotting, divesting too, taking our money out of fossil fuels and destructive ways of doing things and reinvesting in more local resilient systems. Mm-hmm.